Uh, it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be my neighbor? You got to be my neighbor tomorrow night and come down here to Angelina's restaurant to check out the uh, great debate special we're going to be having here starting at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Biz TV will be live. I'll be anchoring the national coverage going to over 60 million homes. We just got approved by the White House Press Corps to actually carry the debate live on Biz TV. I'll be anchoring it with uh, Kevin McCullough and uh, Frank Morano, Aaron Elmore, uh, Kirsten Tate will join us. Uh, A.J. Katzmatidis, the uh, New York City Manhattan uh, Republican Party chair, is going to be here with uh, her counterpart on the Democrat side, Sky Ostreicher will be here. John McLaughlin, Donald Trump's pollster, uh, will be with us, breaking down what all the polls really mean. And if you remember going back to 2016, every single channel you put on, left-wing media, Don Lemon, Fredo Cuomo, Morning J.O., all these different people, Rachel Maddow, uh, Trump has no path to victory. There is no path to victory for Donald Trump. He can only get to 246 electoral votes, even if he wins two swing states. There is no path to victory. And um, all the polls, if you remember going back to then, according to the left-wing media, and you got all these Quinnipiac poll, Maris poll, these are all liberal colleges. Um, and if you know anything about polling, um, I can help you a little bit here. When you see a poll and it's on the screen, oh no, Joe Biden's winning by six points. And look in the bottom left corner and it'll say what kind of people they polled. Okay? And when it says registered voters, um, you know right away, right there, it's a skewed poll because there are more registered Democrats in America than Republicans. So immediately on a straight snap poll, they're polling. More Democrats than Republicans. So there's a built-in win there. Now go a little further down that line when it says likely voters or registered voters. Right next to it, it says margin of error, M-O-E. And you'll see a little plus and a little date and a minus. And it'll say 3%, 4%. I saw some yesterday that said 4.5%. So simple math will tell you um, almost every state that they're saying that Joe Biden is leading they're in the margin of error, okay? And the margin of error could be 2x. So they could be wrong by 4.5% on Joe Biden, and they could be wrong by 4% on Donald Trump. So Donald Trump could actually be nine points higher in some of these polls um, than they're actually showing you. But they want to, um, and I talked about this many times on Liquid Lunch, but you don't know this, but the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, has an office of Hollywood engagement. So the CIA and Hollywood, meaning uh, AKA mainstream media, um, they're in cahoots, okay? And if you ever think about it, what we watch on TV is a TV program, okay? And the CIA did massive testing back in the 60s and the 70s on pounding a message into someone and reprogramming their brain, okay? So a TV program is often used as a media to tell you something that they want you to know. And they're forcing you to think Donald Trump can't win because on election night, you're out with your friends, you're having a martini, and you're like, oh, I gotta go vote for Trump. Nah, the media keeps saying he can't win. So what the hell, I won't even go vote. They're trying to discourage Trump voters from voting. So don't fall for that, don't believe the hype. Um, COVID testing um, is in the news, of course, all the time now. We know uh, categorically that 94% um, of the people who were diagnosed as COVID-related deaths had two or three other comorbidities. So 94% of the 200,000 deaths in this country had some other reasons they died also. There was only 6% of them that the only reason they died was COVID. So there's a very good chance there's between 10 and 20,000 people that actually died from COVID. Um, but um, it turns out that um, these COVID tests would take a place since 2018. That's strange, isn't it? This is supposedly this unique coronavirus that just popped up. Um, on the uh, mail-in voting, Trump keeps talking about it. They, you know, they're making a big deal out of it. Oh, he said there won't be a peaceful transfer of power. He may not accept the results of the election. That's not what he said. 
He said, I think we're going to win by a landslide, but if they don't do something about this mail-in voter stuff, um, anything could happen, and I want to take a look at it and see if there's any shenanigans going on. Uh, the state of Texas Attorney General announces 134 felony voter fraud charges in connection with the 2018 Democratic primary. So um, we talked about it a little earlier uh, up in Minnesota. You got the uh, henchman for uh, freshman congresswoman Ilan Omar. Um, they're out there harvesting ballots and um, throwing the ballots for the enemy in someone's car so they don't actually get counted. And now in Texas, we have 134 felony voter fraud charges in connection with a 2018 primary. So lots to think about with this whole mail-in voting. Um, and uh, getting back to that crazy, whacked-out state of California, this guy Gavin Newsom, I mean... I don't even know what to say anymore. We talked about it a couple of weeks back, this uh, Senate Bill 145 that was passed by this wacko Scott Wiener, California state representative. By the way, Scott Wiener was endorsed by Kamala Harris, and um, Scott Wiener was the guy who put forth SB 145, um, which changed the rules in California for why you would have to be registered as a sex offender. And uh, guess what? Now in California, um, and Gavin Newsom signed this bill, and now in California, if you're 24 years old and you have sex with someone who's within 10 years of your age, even if they're underage, i.e. 14, you're 24, you have sex with a 14-year-old, you don't have to register as a sex offender. Ah, it was consensual. It's okay. Let me tell you something. My son's 14, my daughters are 18 and 21, but if my daughters were 14 and some 24-year-old person had sex with them, they would not need Senate Bill 145 to tell me if they would register as a sex offender because the guy would have a sledgehammer buried in his forehead. So I wouldn't be that worried about it, but I'll tell you this, they're going to get someone killed because um, these people who are pedophiles and California State of Edu Board of Education is introducing um, new curricula to teach kids as low as kindergarten that it's okay to touch each other. They're really wackos out there. And I, I got to tell you, there's this big fault line, the San Andreas Fault. If the whole state snapped off and floated out over there by Hawaii, I think we'd be a hell of a lot better for it, to be honest with you. But in any event, um, also, Gavin Newsom just signed a bill allowing transgender inmates to be placed in prison by their gender identity. Is that true? So wait, you have a penis, but you want to go in the ladies' wing. Okay, I could think of a dozen criminals I know who would go in and say they're identifying as a woman so they could be locked up with a bunch of women instead of locked up with a bunch of men. So. Why don't we do something simple, like here in New York, they took boy or girl off the birth certificate, you could put unknown or Zed or nothing. Um, how about we pull down the pants and whatever's there tells us what you are and which prison you go to. Probably make things a lot easier. It's going to get a lot easier after this when we're joined by uh, Julio Gonzalez from uh, Engineer Tax Service, good friend of Donald Trump's and one of the best tax men around. We're going to talk about Donald Trump's tax return story in the New York Times right after this.